Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whatever time zone you happen to be in. We are at 6 a.m. Jerusalem time and, and South African time, actually, um, on the 28th of February, 2024. And Wednesday morning is always the Africa Watch at 6 a.m. So I welcome you all from the nations. It's lovely to see you coming on. And today we have a speaker who is Nicholas uh, Tugume. Uh, he's from Uganda, and um, I will introduce him just now. So the song that I've chosen is something which is really important because it's thank you, thanking the Lord for the blood that He shed um, on the cross. So we'll we'll start with that, and uh, from then on, I'll pray for him, and then I will hand over to him. And I hope you'll all uh, take part in the prayer time afterwards, which is always a very special time on the Africa Watch. Right, so let me just welcome everybody in prayer. Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you that this is a time set aside for the prayers for Africa and also for the fact that we from Africa can meet with the nations of the world and we can bring not only our requests but we are able to pray for the nations as they come on we thank you lord that you without you we were we are nothing and so therefore lord we want to lift your name higher and the song that of praise and worship to start with is thank you for the blood and Jesus, we are ever grateful that you sacrificed your life so that we could have um, eternal life. And we just say thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, let me share my screen. Wow, it's quite powerful when we remember exactly what Jesus did for us. Um, after um, Nicholas Tugumi has spoken, I'd also like to ask that people will also th think and pray and um, uh, for the YWAM team. Uh, some of you, it was on, um, I mentioned it um, on one of our other calls um, earlier this week, and it was then put up to um, onto the watch. Uh, the fact that they lost at least 11 um, key leaders from YWAM, they were in um, Arusha in Tanzania, and the, uh, a truck lost its brakes and crashed into the second bus as they were coming back from their uh, course, which was actually entitled, um, I wrote it down here, uh, the attending the Executive Masters in Leadership course. So it was their main leaders, a lot of their main leaders from uh, Tanzania and, and other places were actually uh, involved in that. So there's a great mourning from, uh, from uh, YWAM uh, to have lost so many leaders in one go. So I just, uh, maybe I should pray now and then I will just uh, um, hand it over to Nicholas. Lord, I, even as we hear of these kind of tragedies and we, we know though that Lord, if you know everything and you will bring good out of evil. So, Lord, we just pray that even as those who are mourning and those who are, have lost sons, daughters, fathers, mothers, whoever it is, Lord, I just pray that you will just fill their hearts with that peace which passes all understanding. It's the only peace that can really satisfy us, and that is the peace of Jesus. So, Lord, we just pray that you will um, help them to get through this time, and, Lord, that the leadership will be stronger afterwards, that they will just spend time with you, Lord, and realize, Lord, that you bring good from even evil things that happen, and that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. So we just pray for them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let me just uh, hand you over now to Nicholas uh, Tugumi and um, his uh, title is really a call to repentance, which is really appropriate at this time. So I'll hand over to you, Nicholas. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you very much. We praise, praise the Lord. Thank for the leading us, Joe. And uh, we thank uh, brethren who have been able to log in. You'll forgive me for not turning on my video because where I am, uh, power again ran. When we wake up, and there is no power here. <laughs> so I'm using the same gadget for, for, the, for the sharing. My name's uh, Nicholas Tugume. And I'm happy to share with you from Uganda here. And uh, praise the name for such a wonderful morning here in Uganda. Maybe someone somewhere it could be an afternoon and somewhere there is an evening. Here it is a morning. Praise the name of the Lord. We again pray for the people whom we have, who have been lost in that accident. May God support those families. And also pray for the body of Christ, that the Lord will raise more, more people to support and enter into, into that gap of prayer. We are going to share together from Joel chapter 2, but before we launch into the word, let's have a more moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for always bringing us together on this platform to pray for Africa, to pray for the global church, that the Lord may raise men and women that stand in the gap of God as you called us in, in, in Ezekiel, he says, I look for a man who could stand in the gap. Lord, help us Lord, to stand on the walls, to stand on the gap, Lord of Jehovah, four times, O King of Glory, that may be able to do what you've called us to do as intercessors, O God. And even as we come before you, Lord, we are praying that Lord, let your Holy Spirit take full charge. Let your Holy Spirit help us, Lord, that may be able to intercede, may be able to pray. Because your word has told us in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, that we don't know even how to pray, but the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with a lot of groaning. Lord, we are praying that Lord help us to fulfill your purpose and your call upon each of us. We are praying for the rest of the brethren who are part of this fellowship. That, Lord, wherever they are, Lord, may you speak to them. May you meet them. Lord, help them, Lord, always connect to Jehovah. We thank and give you thanks and praise. Even as we share your word this morning, help us to understand your will and also help us to connect to what you're telling us to do. So in Jesus' name, pray the name. So it's Joel 2, 12 to 17. This is in the New King James Version. Now, therefore, says the Lord, Turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering, for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and nursing babies. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. Let the priests who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach, that the nation should rule over them. Why should they say among the people, where is thy God? Amen, amen. Thank you very much for that uh, wonderful reading. And, uh, when you look at the book of Joel and the time when Joel prophesied uh, to the tribe of Judah, it was a time during the time for King Joash, when King Joash was the king of Judah, but also the when remember Jehu, remember Jehu was the, the, the king for Israel, the, the northern kingdom. So this is a time when Israel actually had turned away from God and they had put all their trust in, in, in materialism, and looking for, 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 for materials through other gods. They were worshiping many idols in Israel. 
But why were they worshiping idols? Because they were looking, they had been taken away by materialism. And therefore, there was no, they could no longer come to God with the sincerity because the, the, the place of God had been taken over by the by the idols and also by the heart of materialism. And when I'm looking at this time when when, when Joel was prophesying, I look at it is almost like the time which we are in now, when there is this growth of of materialism everywhere, even in our very churches, where you where you where people they worship they, they, they worship materialism, they worship things of this earth. It is what has taken over the place of God. And we see people have uh, even those who come to church, many of they, 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 their hearts are far off from God. And, and I see it's almost like calling us as the intercessors again, which takes us to, 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 to verses 15, it's saying that below that the, the ram's horn in Jerusalem or in Judah, no, announce a time of fasting, call the people together for a song meeting, gather all the people, the elders, the children, and even the babies call the bridegroom from the quarters because God is calling them to, to come to him with their hearts. That's why he says, but render your hearts not garments. Eh? Tear your clothes. Maybe your violence says tear your clothes. And not your and not your and and and, and tear your hearts and not your clothes. And return to the Lord with all your heart. Who knows? God will have mercy. Because we've seen people the more we, we run to, 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 to what we think that brings us that satisfaction, think it brings us peace, you know, the more we lose peace, the more we become more empty. Maybe this takes us to what Charles Spurgeon said, that you will never know the, 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 the fullness of Christ until you know the emptiness of everything but Christ. Meaning that Unless we are able to empty ourselves, unless we are able to let Christ come in our lives and feel that, that praise, then we shall always be empty and we shall never find any satisfaction anywhere. Therefore, that's why we need God at a time like this when the world has run off from God. Look at the battle, the, the, the wars everywhere. You know, the more people run for materialism, run, run for power, run for for, for, for space, they want to be recognized for recognitions, the more we are losing peace, the more the world is getting fun. That's the, the situation which we are in our currently. And therefore, if there is a time when we need intercessors in this world, it is today. Because when you look at what is happening globally, you look at what is in Israel, when you look at what is in, 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 in Russia, and, and, and I mean, it, it, we need intercessor than ever before. Yet this is the time when actually the, the watchmen are sleeping. You, you go to this platform, especially where we are in, you can check and see. You wonder where, where have intercessors gone? You can no longer find them. You can no longer find them. It's a few who are able to come in. Yes, God is not about the numbers, but my prayer that God will raise men and women. God will raise people like Daniel who are able to stand in the gap. The Elijahs of our time. God raised people who are after the, the Esthers of our time. People are able to come in and cry out the Lord and say, if I perish, let me perish. If I'm, to, if, if, if I'm to die, let me die. But cry out to the Lord that the Lord will spare. People with a pound of prayer, like, like Daniel, who has said, I will not eat anything good. I will take this 21 days and cry out to the Lord. But where will you find intercessors? Recently, we are in one of the meetings for intercessors. Now, even intercessors are now crying of ulcers. Eh? They are crying of ulcers. People are no longer praying. You know, may God have mass on us. May God have mass on us. And God is crying unto us. We are the priests of our time. We are the ministers of our time. That God is calling unto us that we may get out of our, of our comfort zones. We get out of our rooms. You know, we get out of our rooms and stand between the temple and the altar and cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, spare your people. Lord, help your people. Deliver your possession from the object of mockery. May God have mercy on us. We God is calling each of us as intercessors that we may rise up, 
that we may be able to come out and call unto the Lord. And this takes us to, to empty ourselves. This takes us to, to let God take the first place in our lives. Unless we are able to let God, God is the one who intercedes for us, the one who knows where their people is, the one who knows where he wants us to, where he wants us to take his people, is the one who also knows how to lead us in prayer. Because that's the, what the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. We do not know even how to intercede. We don't know even how to pray. Therefore, it is us to empty ourselves so that the Spirit of God may come in us, feed us, and take us to that place where God wants us to stand and we're able to be able to bridge that gap. So may God have mercy on us. And this is the call that God is put, the, 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 the urge that God is putting on my heart. At a time of this, when the church, church has actually run away from God, you know, run away from God. When you come to, to Africa, especially like in Uganda, where, where, I'm, where I am currently, all, all hopes are now on the When you, every church you visit, they are raising cathedrals, cathedrals, cathedrals. They are raising buildings. You, you no longer hear about mission, no? You no longer hear about the heart of, 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 of mission and outreach. So all people are constructing buildings, constructing buildings. Construct, and you wonder, who are these buildings for? Who has, told, who has asked you about the buildings when people are dying of sin? So we pray that God will rekindle the heart of revival. God will rekindle hearts, so set them on a breast, set their hearts on a breast, that we may be able to seek him, that we may find honor and satisfaction in him. And that's only when we can be able to bring the sacrifices that, that pleases him. As the Bible tells us, the sacrifices that pleases him are contrite and a repentant heart. The Lord will never despise. This is all what God requires, not buildings. I mean, not buildings. No, 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 not raising those cathedrals and palaces, you know. And you look at people are struggling raising billions. People are even running off from church because of people asking a lot of money to raise those buildings. And you wonder, buildings for what? When people are dying of sin. So may God have mercy on us. We are called to intercede for the church of Christ because the, the vision and the call being crowded by materialism. That's what I started with, the materialism. Even the church itself that has that mandate of bring people to, they are in the buildings. They, they, they are looking at, no, may God have mercy on us. So it's a call that, that God is putting on my heart this morning that, we may be, that I may share it with us, that we may pray for the church of Christ because the call on us is very clear. We are called to raise leaders, raise people that are able to take the gospel of Christ to the lost. That's what God has called us for, that the lost may come to the light. You know, we are the Elijahs of our time. We are, we are the, 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 the jewels of our time, you know. And, and we cannot see this unless we are able to come out and cry out to the Lord for this revival. When I look at when I look at the, at what is happening in the world. And I feel God is calling us as intercessors. God is calling the church of Christ at such a time as this to raise leaders, to raise leaders that are able to be positioned in the places of influence, the leaders that are able to legislate, the people that are able to, 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 to lead nations in righteousness. And who are people with responsibility? This, this responsibility is not for the, for the people we see in governance. This is a responsibility as a church of Christ and it begins with this house here, which is meeting on this, on this, on this call, that God may help us. We intercede as we intercede, but also we pray for the church to stand in its position, to raise leaders, to raise people who are able to be positioned and do the call that God has given to us. I want to stop from here, that we maybe have enough more time to, to cry to the Lord, to seek the Lord, to pour our hearts to God, to cry for the church of Christ that has run away from the call, the church of Christ that have been that, that, that have lost the vision. Now we are in two looking for buildings, looking for money, looking for what? And, and you wonder where are the priests? You can no longer find priests who are faithful. Yes, they are there. I know they are there, but but a few, most of us have run away from the call, and we are just looking for money, we are looking for, for, for things that cannot even help us. And the more we look for these things, that's what we are reading in this book of, of, of Joel. The more people looked for, 
for materials people look for money people look for help from other things the more they they they, they run away from god and therefore we later on we see israel being taken into captivity because once there is no god in the center of everything everything in other is meaning everything loses meaning once christ is not in the center so we are praying that god will be will take his rightful place in his church to be able to raise people who can be positioned in the seven spheres of influence and bring this world to him take the the, the, the mountains of influence to him bring that education mountain bring that 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 that, that health mountain bring that that business mountain you know bring all those mountains of influence the art at 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 influence mountain to him people are able to move out and bring the nations at the cross of christ it takes the intercessors because we are the ones with the keys that 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 opens the gates of churches gates of nations they are in our hands and god is calling on us that we may use those keys we may exercise that authority to open gates of righteousness and let the king of glory come in and take over the lead of the nations may god bless you thank you for always you. being part of this call we, we are really honored and i'm more humbled to be part of this morning session praise the name of the lord let me hand over to joe that may be able to take thank us you. To the next. yes i want to ask um uh, ronald sasanga so he's going to receive the message from you and um, present it to us and it's definitely a timely message that we don't depend on churches as buildings, but we are the ecclesia and we need to rule and reign as priests and kings. So that is something important. Thank mm. you, Pastor Ronald. Mm. Yes, Father, I do thank you, Lord, for your word through your servant, Pastor Nicholas, Father Lord, as you are admonishing us in Joel 2, Father Lord, not to render our hearts not rent our garments, but our hearts, Father Lord, at this season of rent, Jehovah God. We pray, we pray that, Lord, may our fasting, prayer and fasting, crucify with the flesh, draw us near to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Crucify every imagination, Father, every imagination against your word, Father Lord. We pray that, Lord, will it be brought into captivity? into captivity of obedience of, of your word. Align our thinking, Lord, go to your word, Father Lord. Lord Jesus, disciples asked you, why has this one not happened? You told them that unless you pray and fast, there are some things which will not go away. Lord, we pray that, Lord, may our prayer and fasting this season, Father Lord, stir up our faith. Faith like that to one of a mustard seed, that can move every mountain. Father Lord, every mountain that has been in our lives, in our families, in our nation, Father Lord, we pray that, Lord, those mountains will be will be delivered. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We pray that, Father Lord, this period of fasting will draw us near to you, Father Lord. May we, may we behold your glory. May we, may we come back to that position of first love yearning to know you more and more, the cravings of the Holy Spirit manifesting in our, in our hearts, God over God, through prayer and fasting. Lord, we pray, may our hearts cause a hunger of your word through this season, Lord, through fasting, Father Lord. We want to spiritually be sensitive to your divine instructions. May we receive revelation with clarity through prayer and fasting. Lord, again, we pray for those to open up in this season of, of, of prayer and fasting, Lord, those of divine opportunities to preach your word, to be used as your vessels of honor, to see that your kingdom is established in all spheres of influence in our nations, Father Lord. We thank you, Jehovah God, we exalt your name, magnify your name. Lord, we continue uplifting your servant who used as your vessel of honor. Lord, he declare Isaiah 11 to the spirit of wisdom and understanding rest upon him. The spirit of counsel and might, spirit of fear of God, revelation of a God. And Father Lord, they pray, clothing my garment of a, a, a garment of righteousness and holiness. We pray for the anointing 
and use him, Lord, to see that your glory, your glory, the light of your glory, cover your, your ecclesia, cover nations as the water cover the sea. We exalt and magnify your name in the mighty name of your Messiah. Prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will do the normal raising of hands because it makes it easier for me to see who is uh, wanting to pray. Um, I'd just like to start by praying for something which um, I have uh, heard of before, but also Rick Ridings uh, sent a message to pray for Mozambique, again, another country that belongs to Africa. And Lord, we know that there's so many good things happening in Mozambique. We have people like Heidi Baker who have many, many uh, places for orphans and other um, people who are displaced. And we are getting reports that uh, the uh, Muslims from the north are coming down and are actually getting near to Pemba, which is uh, in the south, southern part of Mozambique. So, Lord, we just pray that you will put a halt to the passage that they are taking and the fact that they are um, stopping people driving on the roads and, and making them either convert to um, Islam or to <clears throat> or to ask for monies or uh, just killing them if they're Christians. So, Lord, we just pray for the Christians in all countries. And, Lord, we pray for the fact that they are standing for you must be evident. Otherwise, they wouldn't be uh, singled out as people who are a threat to Islam. So, Lord, I really pray that you will just protect them and that you will especially protect those areas where the people are doing your work in, in Mozambique. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Margaret, do you have anything that you'd like to pray? Yes, I was looking for the reactions, couldn't find them. <laughs> That's okay. It's also early for you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Joe. Yes, Lord, your word says that we need to rend our heart. This is a heart issue, Lord. Therefore, Lord God, we want to ask you to um, cleanse our hearts and make our, how, our hearts whole, Lord God. And um, some of us may have some hearts, our hearts that have been hurt or whatever it may have been, Lord God, so we're not full, uh, so that our hearts are not complete to you, Father. So, Father, we ask you today to uh, help us so that we can completely rend our hearts to you. And um, your word also says in verse 17, I'm, I'm quoting from Joel 2, uh, let the priests minister to the Lord. Father, We, you have called us to be priests, to minister to you, to call on you, to, to, to cry to you, to, to come to you with all these things that are happening in the world, Lord God. And sometimes as... Uh, Pastor Nicholas said, we, we don't know how to pray and we pray in tongues. So, Father, we ask you to give us your wisdom and your diligence and your direction when we see these things, Lord God. And a scripture that came to me when um, Pastor Nicholas was speaking is Isaiah 26, verses 3 to 4. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. Lord, it's so easy to get so anxious and flustered about what's happening around us, Lord God, but you, you tell us to keep our peace in you so that when we pray, we pray out of that peace, knowing that you are at hand, knowing that you know everything, that nothing, nothing surprises you. You know everything that's happening, but we need to minister to you. We need to co-labor with you, Lord, from the place of rest. Teach us, teach us from this place of rest to pray for our nations. And I want to continue to pray, Lord God, for what is happening um, um, in, uh, in the Hague, Lord God. And so many things are happening. The nations are coming against Israel, Lord God. It is devastating to see, Lord God. But we want to thank you, Lord God, for those nations like Brazil, 
that has all of a sudden turned and um, are for Israel. So, Father, we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we, we just pray that as the Lord is sifting out the the nations, the goat and the um, sheep nations, and and there's so many of us who who in the nation that we live in want our nation to be a sheep nation. And Lord, we just pray that that even as this is a year of so many elections in the world, that you will start aligning the people to have the say as to what relationship they want with Israel. And I'm speaking particularly from South Africa's point of view um, because of the fact that that we are supposedly um, the nation coming out against uh, Israel. Um, as a people, we are not, but as a government, they are. And so, Lord, we, we actually um, have um, so many prayer times uh, on Sunday and other times they were meeting throughout the country, just small groups of people just standing with Israel and uh, uh, claiming the, the um, sovereignty of God in this situation. And our chief uh, rabbi uh, also has spoke a, a wonderful message. If you ever see it, it uh, is on YouTube as well. So, Lord, I just pray that you would help the nations to realize that they are making a stand on behalf of their people. But also, I pray for the people to realize that by electing certain governments, they are putting us in the wrong place. So, I really pray that you would just honor uh, the, the prayers of the people that that in your wrath, I always pray for mercy and that you will see our hearts those of us who are so for Israel and so for, uh, praying for, for the nation. So we just uh, bring them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yes, Lord, I, I pray in this situation of um, persecution and um, twisting the truth, and especially also in Mozambique. I thank you, Lord, that that you in Africa, that there's um, several places where revival is going on and a lot of people coming to the Lord. And um, yes, and you, it's obvious that you are destroying the, the um, altars of the enemies. And I thank you for this. And at the same time, there is this persecution there, there is this other People are getting killed, and uh, Lord, you said in uh, Isaiah, I think, about 56, if the enemy is coming in like a flood, your spirit is um, rising on a barrier. So we ask for you, Shekinah glory, to rise up this barrier, to stop them, and that this, this Shekinah, your glory, is coming upon uh, those persecuted persecutors in order to get saved and to get to know you. Lord, I ask that there is really your Holy Spirit setting up this barrier and um, turning around this situation, especially in Mozambique and um, in other places like Sudan and where this persecution is so heavily, so so um, strong, and that the enemy won't have a, um, have the victory, but you have the victory, because you you have no pleasure on the death of your people, you say, and so we ask for protection for you, Christian. We ask that you hide them in your places. We ask. That you put your your umbrella, your your canopy over them, and send angelic hosts. But at the same time, that you, uh, in your authority, and which is in them, because you are in them, that um, there is this barrier to stop, to stop this violence, to stop this this agenda of bloodshed in Jesus name 
And for us as Christian in the nations where we don't have persecution, I pray that that there's awakening too, that we are not um, living further just in our comfort or in comfort zones and um, neglecting this truth of spiritual warfare. So I ask that you waken up this, the church and getting them together in in prayer, intercessor, in worship, and seeking you, putting you in the first place, and even in our hearts, that you are going to cleanse our hearts. Even we pass the last days, I ask that, um, yeah, that this is not the end of the story of fasting, but that we seek you and that we are sensitive to your voice. Um, <clears throat> and follow you, your shepherd. You are our shepherd. As for love, for strength, for for us, for your people, for your children. In Jesus' name, Amen. Yes, Lord, and we do thank, as Margaret has put in the chat, for those of you who haven't read it, um, it is lovely always to see more men onto our global watch. And um, we we need to hear the voices of the men speaking and praying out. And I just thank you for every church that are now having um, 6 a.m. prayer meetings with men um, the, here in Johannesburg, where I am at the moment. They, they're having one on at the church my son goes to on a Tuesday morning. I know in our church uh, in down in Ganubi, it's on a Wednesday morning. So maybe as the weeks go by, we'll get more and more men involved in, in prayer. And it's been the, the, the desire of, the, of our hearts, especially as our ladies' fellowships seem to be always very strong with prayer, um, to actually raise up men to actually meet together not just in a corporate prayer meeting because where we have men and women, but uh, to get together themselves because then they can share at a much deeper level in, in between each other. So I really also acknowledge that and I also pray for that to happen more and more in the nations. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hilary, thank you. Yes, I, I want to um, pray in agreement with you all and just to ask Heavenly Father, where there have been calluses that have come over our hearts. And I particularly pray for those in Africa, Father, where they have been passionate in the past and true intercessors crying out to God. And then this whole issue of mammon has come in and this competition to build the biggest place and all the materialistic stuff. Father God, so often underneath it all, there's a broken heart or there's so much pain and hurt. And I want to ask for you to come as redeemer, restorer, healer, deliverer, in the name of Jesus. I want to pray, Father, for those where there's been a lot of witchcraft curses and evil that's been coming against the congregations, Father God, for a discernment of what's going on in the spiritual realm. And Father, any way where the religious spirit has been able and given a permission to come in, rules, regulations, rituals, programs, instead of the beautiful freedom that so many of us have been so blessed in being part of African congregations. Lord, we cry out to you in the name of Jesus for your purging, purifying, cleansing of your body in Africa. And you speak in Hebrews 8 that we're not to despise the times of your chastenings because your desire is to bring forth your peaceable fruit of righteousness. Father, I pray this for our brothers and sisters, just as I've been praying it for our Australian church. And we would not allow the religious spirit, the old soul system, to rob us from going into this new wineskin season that you're bringing us into where truly we need to yield to your lordship need to yield to you as the lord and our shepherd to guide us to lead us you know where the minefields are father so that you can steer us through this journey a way we haven't gone before 
and that father we wouldn't be your blind sheep or or leaders we would have our eyes open to see you heavenly father our ears open to hear your voice our hearts circumcised to desire to follow your word your instruction your command and uh, to truly desire to humble down and come to that place where it's no longer us who lives but you lord jesus who have been welcomed in to live your life in and through us and in that place we find your peace so i pray for this for the body of christ in africa lord in jesus name amen 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 thank you thank you mary father god i ask for the grace and the gift of truth so that each one of us and the whole of the ecclesia can evaluate our lives, can evaluate our relationship with you in truth and not to be discouraged, but to go further in love, knowing that you meet us where we are, knowing that you will not leave us nor forsake us, but take us upwards and onwards to the place where you have prepared for us. That no matter what the discouragement, no matter what trials comes against us, that we will overcome just as you did. For there were many things in life that you had to bear and I thank you, Lord, that we do not have to be crucified. We have to crucify our flesh. But you've paid the price in full. And Lord, I ask and I declare, Lord, I just break that spirit of disillusionment and discouragement and that sense of disconnect. Help us, Lord, not to lose faith when things in our lives don't seem to measure up and we know the truth that's in your word, but we don't see it in our lives. Lord, help us to evaluate that and help us to just cleave even more strongly and deeply into you because we know that our divine reality, that we we live in Christ, Christ lives in us. And oftentimes it's nothing that we have done. We have not done the wrong thing. But we live in a broken world. There are fractured relationships. There are things beyond our control. So Father, I'm just asking for your wisdom for your wisdom and your love to rise up in us, Father, to show us the truth as you see it, not as we see and understand it, but as you do. I pray, Lord, for you to give us that courage. Take our hand, Lord, and take us into that next step we need to take. Help us to take that next step into a deeper love and relationship with you where the self is no more, where you reign, where you come first. Father, where there are false narratives, where we've been leaving false narratives, I ask that that be corrected by the truth of your word. Show us clearly, Holy Spirit, Show us clearly which way to go and how to make the correction. Give us, the, give us the truth in your word. Lead us to teachings that will lead us deeper into the truth and out of the false narratives into the truth. And help us, Lord, give us the grace to let go of all those things, no matter how dear they've been to us, no matter how precious they've been to us, 
if they're not of you, help us, Lord, to just let them go and to take your hand because you will not leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Lord. We can rely on you. I thank you that your word has final authority in our lives and you are our good shepherd. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. And I declare, Lord, for sure, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And in your house, we shall dwell forever. I thank you, Lord. You are faithful and true. You are trustworthy. You are dependable. You are our Lord. You are our God and we worship you. We trust you, Father. We trust your love and we believe in your word and power. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance and healing. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Frederick, uh, your turn. Thank you. Father, we ask you to open our ears that we will hear the blowing of your trumpet, of your shofar. When you are calling us, when you are calling your body as watchmen, as intercessors. Father, I ask you to wake up your body. To be ready for what you called us. Father, and I ask you especially for your body and effort that they will not copy the Western Church with our entertainment programs, but that they will keep the fire you put on them and that their fire will burn and even that they will bring us in the Western world again on fire for you. Father, we need your fire, your Holy Spirit. Wake up your sleeping body. Open our eyes for the things that are really important. Let us hear your voice calling us and not any longer sleep or slump. And Father, we thank you that you are not a silent God, but that you are talking, that you are calling us. Let us hear your voice and do what you called us. Thank you, Father, that you are a merciful God to all of us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I'd just like to um, call on Nicholas uh, to go me again. Um, I'd like him to really pray from Uganda now down to South Africa. I'd really like him to pray into the situation with our ANC government. And um, as I said on a Saturday, we as um, the South African representatives of the ICJ, we always hand over to Uganda. So I'm just asking if you would just pray either for well, just as the Lord leads, as to how our government can change its stand on Israel. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your love and your faithfulness. And in this moment in time, Lord, we want to bring Israel in your hands of God. And we pray that, Lord, you raise, you raise men and women that will stand with Israel, raise nations that will stand with Israel as time are the issue of King of Glory. Because your word has told us that pray for the peace of Israel, then you shall also find peace. He says, whoever prays for peace of Israel shall be blessed. Lord, it's a prayer that the nations of the world shall be able to tap into this blessing 
of standing with Israel at such a time as this, O King of Glory. And in particular, Lord, we are praying for the African continent that, Lord, we shall see more nations coming out to support Israel in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we are concerned about the position of South Africa, O oh God. And we are praying, Lord, as your, as your stewards and your children, as your shepherds, O oh God. Pray that, Lord, you help their leaders, Lord, to change their position in time of this, O oh King of Glory, that may be able not to go with what the majority say, but they'll be able to align with your will and your purpose, O oh God, at such a time as this, O oh King of Glory. And therefore, we are praying for those leaders, that, Lord, you be able, Lord, to position the right leaders, that they are able, Lord, to see what you see, that they are able to align the nation in the alignment of your purpose and your will, O oh King of Glory, and be able to align, O oh God, with what you want to be seen and what you want to see, O oh God, and done, O oh King of Glory. We are praying for NC, Lord, as a leading government at such a time as this, Lord, that, Lord, you touch the hearts of their, the leaders, touch the hearts of your people, God, that may be able, Lord, to understand your, your position. Just as we see the Levites were able to come out when Moses asked, who is for the Lord? And the Levites were able to come out and stand and say, we are for the Lord. We are praying that, Lord, Africa as a continent, but it's specific for, for specific, specifically for South Africa, Lord, we shall see it also come out of the Levites, come out or came out of King of Glory and stand on your side, O oh God, and be able, Lord, to move in your direction and also move in your guidance, O oh God. Thank for other nations like Uganda that have come out of oh God clearly and are able to know your will and stood by your side, O oh God. We are praying that other nations be able to come out clearly, O oh God, and also pray that, that this time, Lord, you will lead Israel through. We've seen that it's not about the power, it's not about the might, as you did for Gideon, as you did in the times of David, as you did for the times of many others, Jehoshaphat, as you did for the time of Hezekiah. You came to show that it's not about the might, it's not about the, the weapons, but it's all about you. Come out, O oh God, save your people, Israel, and give us victory to the glory and honor of your name. In just in a prayer, believe. Amen. 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 Yes. And we we do lift up Israel all the time as well. And obviously this afternoon at 3 p.m. Uh, Jerusalem time is the Israel Watch. Um, and then tomorrow there are some special meetings. Um, we um, um, have had notice that uh, Sheldon Kidwell, who some of you remember from the past, he used to be on here a lot. Uh, he and Pearl Coupe, who's been an amazing lawyer of, um, uh, for South Africa to stand for justice and um, in this nation. And then there's a prophet, Jan Janet Hollis, who is also going to be coming on. They were going to be speaking mostly about South Africa, but I believe that they are actually extending it more into a global um, theme. So that will be on Thursday at 3 p.m. Jerusalem time. There's so much happening that if you're not on the signal <laughs> group, you miss out on knowing what is actually happening. And uh, so we just thank those in leadership of Global Watch for giving Africa Watch the uh, platform of this platform to be able to speak into Africa and for um, other calls uh, that we uh, enjoy listening to and praying with and being part of. It is so amazing to be part of such a wonderful global community. I would just like to read the um, one of the things that um, was was brought up was about the fact that when, when the enemy does come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And I just want to read the last verse from that Isaiah 20, uh, 59, it's verse 21. It says, as for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. And so as we pray for this, we just say thank you, thank you, thank you for your love uh, for um, the nation of Israel. And Lord, that we have that love in us because we are part of, 
of that. Um, we, we have been grafted into the root of Israel. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Right, well, we get to the point where we are already past the top of the hour. So I would just like to ask you to unmute. Um, if you want to save your chats, remember to save the chat. <clears throat> and um, that you will be on the next call or whenever you can be on a call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nicholas. Thank you all. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming on Africa. so faithfully, yeah. all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.